Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up your very own VPN server at home. Now you might be wondering, why should I do that when there's so many like VPN providers out there? Wait, and that's a great question. And that's exactly what we're covering today. The why and the how of self-hosting your own VPN. Let's start with the why. Hosting your own VPN gives you a secure remote access to your own home network. Whatever your it's your personal files, media servers, or home lab projects. This is especially useful if you work on like digital projects or just want to access your setup from anywhere. But most importantly, the reason for me is the control over your data. When it when it comes to self-hosting, there are no like third-party VPN providers or ISPN providers that's logging your traffic, selling it to uh, ad providers. And to sum it up, you just you own your data. And lastly, self-hosting also saves you money by not having to pay the monthly fees that's associated with VPN services. And with that in mind, let's get to the actual setup step by step. Okay, let's get this started by downloading WildGuard software by using our package manager. Note, throughout this video, we will be setting up a VPN service, which is similar to online providers. Now we're going to start generating the public and the private key for the server. The public key will be given to the client to encrypt the data, and the private key on the server will decrypt the data as it's transferred from the client to the server. We will now start creating the server's configuration file by copying the server's private key first. By this point, I've already generated the server's public and private keys. Now let's walk through the server's configuration. Now we can see that the address defines the VPN's internal IP address. This address is what your server uses to communicate with the clients. Next we have the save config. This allows WireGuard to automatically update when saves occur. We set listen port to 5000. Choosing non-default ports helps reduce visibility to common port scanners, adds a small level of obscurity. And finally, private key holds the server's uh, private key. This is used for encryption and secure communication with the clients. Just make sure to never share this publicly. We will now make sure that the VPN service works correctly with our current configuration file. Now we're generating the client's public and private keys. The public key will be saved on the client's configuration file. It's used to securely encrypt the data that is the client sends to the VPN server.
Now let's take a look at this client's configuration file. Now the client's private key is used to authenticate the client and establish a secure connection to the server. The address under the interface is the IP address the client will use to communicate over the VPN. Think of it as the identity of the VPN network. The DNS field lets the client resolve domain names. I'm using clouds for DNS here since it's fast and secure. The public key, the server is public key but to be exact is used to encrypt the data during the handshake process, allowing the server to off and establish a secure connection. The allow IP setting tells the client that the traffic should go through the VPN. Setting it to our example, the zeros, will route all the traffic through the VPN, just like a commercial VPN service. And finally, the endpoint is the public IP address of your VPN server, followed by the port number. This tells the client where to connect. We will now use the following command to add the client's public key and IP address to the server's configuration file. Now we are allowing the VPN service through the firewall. Now that we set up our VPN server and client, client configuration file, our next step is to set up IP forwarding. This lets the server forward traffic it receives from the VPN client out to the internet. And the second we will be doing is um, is the next is NAT, which stands for Network Address Translation. It rewrites the outgoing packets from the VPN client so they look like they're coming from the VPN server real IP address and not the private VPN address. This is important because the internet cannot respond to the VPN's at pr private address as they don't understand it.
Now we will be testing our VPN by trying to access Hack the Box website through our VPN. And don't forget to afford the port that you're using for your VPN service, as that's the most crucial part of accessing your VPN over the internet. And that should be all for today. Thank you for watching my video all the way to the end. And if this helped you, don't forget to like and subscribe.